Hello, I'm Dylan Hartman from Durango Silver Company and today I want to talk to you a little bit about Marinci Turquoise. Marinci Turquoise is some of the most beautiful American turquoise around and actually some of the most famous. Marinci Turquoise from southeastern Arizona was one of the highest producers of turquoise. The mine is actually a copper mine and it's owned by Phelps Dodge and it's the largest copper mine in America actually produces over 750 million pounds of copper a year, which is pretty impressive. And if you've ever driven past there, the mine is absolutely massive, miles and miles of pit. But anyways, they didn't really like the miners going and lunchboxing turquoise, and that's how it was first brought out, is they would accidentally hit a deposit or veins of turquoise when they were mining for copper, and the miners thought it was so beautiful that they'd take some of it and they'd put it in their pocket or their lunch box and they'd bring it out and share it with their families and eventually they'd um, show other people and they'd show interest and they'd buy it from them. And they figured out that the turquoise was more valuable than the copper. So pretty soon they started spending more time getting the turquoise than the copper. And the miners of course didn't like that, the mine owners. And so eventually they took and they buried one of the largest deposits of turquoise that's ever been found with hundreds of thousands of tons of debris from the pit. So much so that it would cost too much and take too long to ever get that back out. But after that time, the mine was leased to Lucky Brown or William Lucky Brown. And the Brown family had the exclusive lease to the Marinci turquoise. And they sold that turquoise from 1956 to 1984, which is when the lease was uh, valid. And Marinci turquoise at that time was one of the most used turquoises in Native American jewelry. Marinci turquoise runs from a beautiful robin's egg blue, such as this beautiful, very, very large wafer right here, which is an incredible specimen of high-grade natural American turquoise. You can see how beautiful and thick that big vein is. And then it would go from that to these thin little wafers like this. And a lot of times this little wafer like this would be a really, really high grade and, and would have like a jelly type blue and sometimes spider web. And a lot of times it'd have the footprint or fingerprint of the Marinci mine and it would have iron pyrite in it. And a lot of folks will call me and say, yeah, I've got a piece of old jewelry with gold in it or silver in it. Well, it's not actually gold or silver. It's actually um, iron pyrite. Here's another neat wafer. This this will probably be, again, that beautiful kind of almost sleeping beauty blue. Um, look at this beautiful piece right here. This piece, I don't know if you can see it as good in the camera. Um, it might just look black, but that all right up in here, that's iron pyrite. Let me spray that with a little water to show you. Right, maybe this might shed some, some light on the fact. But you can see that pyrite now sitting all right up in here. And this piece, when you cut it into cabochons, will be probably some of the most popular turquoise I've ever cut, um, which is going to be your beautiful blue with the iron pyrite in it. And people are just wild about it. And it is actually some of my favorite turquoise. But you can see right in here that 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 vein is going to produce cabochons. They'll have beautiful iron pyrite all the way through them, and that is what Marenzi's really became famous for. And um, let me spray this one. But Marenzi has many looks, just as all turquoise mines do. People always associate a certain mine with a certain look or or several different looks. But most turquoise mines produce turquoise in all varieties. Um, and a lot of them will produce green and blue. They'll produce different colors of matrix, different patterns. And uh, sometimes it can be confusing to, to buyers or collectors if they're not the ones buying them from the miner or have enough knowledge to know the difference. This piece is really neat because it has quartz and the pyrite. And this pyrite is really pretty. It's kind of a blackish and it has, probably has a little bit of um, other minerals in there as well. And uh, so here's a, here's a handful of that type of material that was sold by the Browns. And back in the day, how this would be sold is much like, this is a jewelry display uh, tray that I have here. But much like this, they would sell it in old um, Coke or, or um, uh, beer flats. 
And what you would do is they'd have these flats separated into different sizes and shapes of turquoise. So maybe one flat would be all of this wafer material. Um, and maybe it would go up to about this thick. And then they'd have another flat that was maybe this size and this coloration. And then you'd have some that had the massive uh, material in it. And, um, and they would just sell it by the flat. And, uh, and depending on what you want to use it for, it's all good. It just depends on what you're using it for. Um, here's a really neat specimen I'd like to show you. This piece here, I'm just going to make a little mess here, but that's okay. Um, this little piece here, I think it's got a lot of dust on me. You don't want to suck the water in. But this, I don't know if you can really see it in the camera, but this here is a nice vein of Morenci. And this is going, this rock is solid pyrite. It's iron pyrite. It, now it's been out of the mine for years. This is piece of, here has probably been out of the mine for 70 years. And so it's all oxidated, uh, I mean, excuse me, oxidized and all that, full of dust. You really can't see the pyrite too good, but where I've gotten it wet, you could kind of maybe see that it's a little bit brassy looking. But this is a solid hunk of pyrite um, with, with turquoise vein going through it. And so that's just a really neat specimen to kind of see, you know, how some of this material would run and why it has the pyrite inside of the turquoise. Um, another thing I wanted to touch on with this, with this turquoise is a lot of it was this baby blue, but it would also run into this beautiful deep blue. And that's natural. That's not stabilized. It's not color enhanced. It's 100% natural. And, um, and so... You know, a smaller amount, of course, was that deep blue. But this mine did produce a natural deep blue, and some even darker than this, as I'll show you in the cabochons that I have prepared here. And uh, again, I didn't get all looks of Marancy, but try to give you a variety, showing that it can be clear blue, it can have a little bit of matrix, it can have black spider web, um, it can have the pyrite, it can have quartz, uh, and it can even have a brownish matrix. So let me show you some cabochons here, too. The fact is, speaking of that, um, I want to show you one here that's pretty interesting. Here's one, a really interesting Marinci. Now that's Marinci, but I've also seen Pilot Mountain that looks like that, and I've seen Bisbee Turquoise that looks like this stone here. And so um, a real good reason for showing you that is that, you know, you really need to be an expert to know um, if you're going to be paying a lot of money for turquoise or be dealing with somebody that is an expert that you trust and, and backs their material up. And here's a real stunner here. I mean, that is just the type that my jewelry buyers go wild for. With that beautiful pirate and that just jelly blue. I mean, this stone is so hard, it's almost got a translucency to it. Um, and then this stone here, look at this one. I mean, you probably wouldn't even ask Marinci. That's got a water web look and it's a light blue with almost a goldeny white spider web to it. So there's a nice variety there. And, um, and then let me show you what that looks like in jewelry. Here's a neat piece that my father, John Hartman, just made with a massive piece of Marinci. And this came out of one of those big wafers. And this has the water web character, or the Kingman boys like to call it bird's eye. Um, and then they have, you know, you have your brown matrix there. And this one doesn't have any pyrite, but it does have some beautiful matrix and patterning to it. And super, again, super hard and glassy. Here's another, here's one that's got kind of, to me, a classic Marinci look with the fine spider web. And if you were to look at this under a magnifying glass, you would see that in that spider web is pyrite. And then... Here's one of those just jammy, jammy um, spider web looks. This is a really nice look here of Marinci. And one last example, and this is a pretty classic, really, really, this is Marinci look here. As you can see in this stone, it's that beautiful true blue color, and then it has the quartz and the pyrite. And then the pyrite and the quartz form spider web matrix. But this is what I, I would call classic Marinci that has not been enhanced or stabilized. This is 100% natural Marinci, and it really should mostly, for the most part, have that tonation of blue. 
Um, so I hope you've learned a little bit from me. And if you'd like to see more information about Morancy Turquoise, we have a big informational page on DurangoSilver.com. And you just simply can either type in Google Morancy Turquoise Durango Silver, or you can go to our site DurangoSilver.com and you can type in the search bar Morancy Turquoise and it'll pull up all the products with Morancy and then it'll have a little tab that says news and information. You can click that and it'll have all our stories about Morancy Turquoise. I hope this has been helpful and I will see you again next time to teach you about another mine. Have a great day. If you like my video, please give me a thumbs up and follow us to see more information about turquoise mines, turquoise, turquoise jewelry, and how to make jewelry. Have a good one.